we're now going to have an overview of the Multimedia Systems Unit, which is actually an option topic as a part of the Information Processes and Technology Stage 6 HSC course. Now, Multimedia Systems obviously involve us using many different types of media to create projects, and Multimedia is just everywhere. This actual unit is broken up into many subtopics, and we're going to take a look at them in a mind map format in order to understand the unit as a whole. So firstly, we have characteristics of multimedia systems. These characteristics include okay, fields of expertise required in the development of multimedia applications, information systems that include combinations of media, differences between print and multimedia, and demands placed on hardware. For the fields of expertise, okay, we include content providers, which is actually an example of what I'm doing right now. I content provide for YouTube. I upload videos onto YouTube okay, and video content, obviously. But this obviously goes into many other areas of the industry. System designers and project managers, and throughout the IPT course, we've been talking about them in the development of any information system, how they basically need to design the system, what it's going to look like, but also follow a timeline, factor in budget, talk about training participants, and a whole range of other areas that all need to be planned out. The collection and editing of each type of media, okay, so how we edit videos using specific type of software, how we create animations using specific type of software, Okay, and a whole range of different software, which obviously is needed to create all the different components, and then we need to put them all together. The design and layout of these projects, so how we make them look, and obviously they've got to look appealing, and they've also got to cater to their target audience. And then the technical skills to support the use of the information technology, because it can get quite intense when you're creating these projects. They uh, involve you know, pixel by pixel design when doing graphic design. You know, you need to obviously animate things so they look fluidly. So there is a lot of skill, obviously, in learning the software to create these actual projects as well as the hardware. Okay, and it's an acquired skill that over time, okay, and training, you get good at. For the information systems that use combinations of media, okay, we need to know what are the media that makes up the multimedia. Okay, and usually we say that it has at least three of these types of media types to be classified as multimedia. So text and numbers, audio for sound, images and animation. Okay, and remember animation is images that essentially move frame by frame. Okay, video, which is recorded from real world and then processed and put into a system. And the use of hyperlinks to connect different parts of files or a system together in order to give us a multimedia package. The differences between print and multimedia, basically the different modes of display. One is paper-based, obviously, and the other one is usually displayed on a monitor or device. Okay, Interactivity with print media, there isn't much, Okay, but with multimedia, we can have much, much more interactivity between the user and the actual multimedia application. The ease of distribution, the fact that we can email out an electronic document, a multimedia document. But with an actual paper-based document, we might need to do mail it out or distribute it by hand, which can be very time-consuming and hard to send. And then authority of the document. Who owns the document? How does the author get recognized as being owned of the document? Which then also probably links into copyright. And then finally is the demands placed on hardware for multimedia devices, because these are quite large file sizes that we're dealing with. So the primary and secondary storage, storage requirements. So do we have enough RAM to actually run it on our computer and process it? Sometimes when you purchase a game online, it asks what level do you want to run it at and like with, in relation to quality. And if you don't have the hardware, you might have to lower it at a lower resolution uh, of graphics or something like that so your machine can handle it. Okay, and then secondary storage requirements, meaning hard disk space or um, solid state drive space required to install it onto the system. Okay, because there are a lot of parts of these multimedia packages related to the sizes of images, related to the video compression, related to the amount of animation that create a really large file size. The amount of processing power required to run the system as well. So the actual CPU you're running, can it actually process what the system is doing? So large file sizes, we need to process all the graphics. We need to make sure that the right frames are on screen. With animation, we're doing things such as morphing, distorting, tweening, okay? And this obviously requires a lot of processing power, putting pressure on the CPU. And then display devices, okay, for the display of pixels. So our high resolution monitors or projectors, so that the actual multimedia presentation views the quality that we've actually put together in developing this actual application. Okay, so display devices, 
uh, both hardware, okay, in our actual screen and its resolution, okay, our projectors, and for audio speakers. The next area is displaying in multimedia. So hardware used for creating and displaying and software used for creating and displaying. So our two basic categories of information technology here. For the hardware, okay, so our types of monitors, CRT, which is basically obsolete now, LCD and plasma, okay, which is basically what our TVs are as well. Touch screens, which are obviously display, but they're also used for collecting too because the users can touch the screen for inputting in data. Digital projection devices, and especially for presentations and uh, video, uh, videos to be viewed en masse, we usually project them onto a screen like at the cinema. Speakers and sound systems for displaying audio data. CDs, DVDs, and videotape for the storage of data, which then can be inserted into an actual system so we can display them. And then HUDs and headsets, and HUD or HUDs uh, re refer to heads up display. So things we can put on our heads to change our actual experience with the multimedia device. And there's been a lot of look into that with virtual reality, putting on headsets, okay, as well as aug augmented reality headsets okay that change the way we view things through the actual glasses or headset so that we are seeing the real world but we're placing digital images on the real world changing our experience software includes presentation software such as microsoft powerpoint or keynote okay allowing us to create presentations this is actually created with presentation software video processing software such as iMovie or Windows uh, Movie Maker allowing us to create videos to add in transitions to crop the movie um, change sounds add in effects authoring software such as um, Dreamweaver for creating websites it's web authoring software okay and then we also have um, Photoshop which is for image authoring software allowing us essentially to create media okay authoring software allows us to be an author to create okay animation software for creating animations and then browsers for viewing websites so being able to transfer html code into its intended visual look for us online and then html editors which are available within browsers to create websites which is a popular way of creating websites nowadays the next area we'll look at are examples of multimedia systems now we have the major areas of multimedia use and then due to advances in technology we, it influences multimedia. So the major areas include education and training, which is obviously what we're doing right here. I'm using multimedia to train and educate people in multimedia systems. Leisure and entertainment would be basically where a lot of our gaming would be, our movies, things that obviously entertain us. We like to do in our recreational time. Okay, information provisions. So think about kiosks set up at events or at shopping centers that allow you to look for certain stores and actually provide information about the area so you can navigate your way around okay virtual reality and simulation so this one's again links back to our headsets but it's not obviously limited to headsets we also have simulation like flight simulators okay that basically make us feel like we're in an environment okay they emulate an environment and simulate that experience that we are in that environment so if it's a flight simulator it simulates that I'm in a plane so I can learn how to fly, but obviously get through to the danger of me flying an actual plane with no experience. And then the final point is combination areas. Okay, so you could say that a flight simulator obviously is a simulation, but it's also education and training too, because it's training people how to fly a plane. So combination areas is where these overlap with each other. Advancements in technology that inf influence multimedia are basically increased storage. With the coming of Blu-ray technology, it allowed us to create bigger games okay that we can play on our consoles okay so increased storage allows us to put more graphics in more stages in those games more programming more audio files which allows us to make a bigger game overall so that's just linked to bigger storage sizes improved bandwidth it improves our network experience so basically what we can do on the internet as well as within our networks the more bandwidth we have the more uh, the greater flow of data between servers and clients okay allowing them to access resources improved resolution and basically we have just entered into the 4k generation which means our monitors okay are now 4k having a lot more pixels and providing a lot more obviously detail within the video files that we create in the digitized data the processing power of cpus okay because as mentioned already multiple times these files these images these videos these audio files are large files 
and the CPU needs to be able to handle that. So when we have higher powered CPUs, they can process that a lot quicker, okay, allowing us to combine more of them together to create a better multimedia experience. And then finally is the compression of media. So because they're file sizes, what can we do them to reduce their file sizes once they've been created? And there's a lot of compression methods sometimes linked to making it a specific file format. From here, we look at the other information processes okay, that are covered in this unit. And we look at four of them. We look at collecting, storing and retrieving, processing and organizing. Now for collecting, we look at basically how we actually collect text numbers in digital format, which is pretty much what we do in most our information systems. But multimedia goes a step further in that we're also collecting the data types of audio, video and images and not just collecting them in digital form. We sometimes are getting them in analog form when we're using an old school recorder. Okay, and then we got to obviously record it and then obviously put it into the system and it gets converted into digital form. Or with audio, we actually play the song and we need to connect it to a vice that turns the analog of me playing a guitar into a digitized version of that same, of what I just played. Okay, and images may need to be scanned before they're put into a system. Okay, so that they can be digitized. Okay, and so that is obviously examples of methods of digitizing analog data in, into a digital form. For storage and retrieval, okay, basically the importance of file formats. So JPEG, GIF, PNG for the compression of file formats, okay, because a BMP format, something that you actually make in paint, is actually a larger file size because it's uncompressed. Okay, so we need to compress them so that we can put them in the files and reduce our storage space. We've got MPEG, QuickTime, AVI, and WMV for video and animation file formats, and then MP3 and now MP4, WAVE, WMA, and MID for audio file formats, and SWF, SWF for animation file formats. And essentially, these are used in conjunction with certain processes that actually compress the actual data on the file. Now, some of these are done in a lossy format and some in a lossless format, okay, and essentially, we can decompress some of these file sizes. So they may get compressed for storage and while we put them into a medium so we can distribute it, but then we might wanna then decompress it so we have the full size file at the end of it. And it depends on what the actual multimedia device is being used for and who it's being distributed to. With processing, okay, we are obviously looking at how all of these different media types are being processed. So the integration of text and or number, audio and image and video, all within one file, all of that being processed at once. So multiple processes for different media types all occurring at once. Okay, once again, the compression and decompression of all that data. And then the use of hypermedia for maybe linking different documents together within the multimedia system. So we may have an area for video, an area for animation, okay, within my system. How do we link these, connect these together? Okay, and it requires some intense programming and linking. And then finally is organization, and this is usually planned out in our, in our storyboarding stage at the beginning of the development cycle. Okay, we have a few types of storyboarding layouts here too. So we've got linear, which may be used to plan a movie, where we have one scene after the other, or in a linear format, so like a straight line. Hierarchical, which is used maybe for outlining a website, so we have our home page first, and then from our home page we have our initial subpages, it might be four subpages. And then from those four subpages, it may break off to even into more pages. Okay, we have nonlinear where there is no format in our storyboard layer. Okay, pages are just linked to each other randomly, or parts of our actual system are linked to each other with no clear type of format. And then finally, combination, in which these three styles of linear, nonlinear, and hierarchical are all used in combination in different areas of our storyboard. And then the final area we look at are issues related to multimedia systems. And basically these issues include copyright, okay, and as we mentioned with authoring before, if I create something, who owns that property and who has the right to copy it? Do I work for myself? Do I work for a larger business? And as mentioned with me being a YouTube content provider, who has the right to own this actual video? The appropriate use of the internet, okay, so internet obviously is an open forum. Anyone can post onto it, especially with things like wikis, okay, and stream services. Anyone can post to it is what we're putting online appropriate? Is it relevant? Okay, and then um, obviously, what is like the quality of what we are putting up? The merging of radio and television communications and the internet via digitization. Now, obviously, all our TVs and radio are digitized now, whereas 10 years ago, they were analog. 
Okay, and this has brought with it a lot of advantages now because I can connect my TV and radio to the internet, opens up more channels. Obviously for the radio, there's hundreds of radio stations now that can be accessed from all over the world. Okay, so this digitization has improved access, it allows us to record live TV and rewind live TV. So a lot of benefits have come with the digitization of data. The integrity of the original source of data in education and other multimedia systems. So when I digitize data or I'm making something into a digital format, does it still have its original data, the things that made it meaningful, the thing that had the quality of education in its original form? When we digitize it, does it carry over? Does it have to be modified or changed or adopt a new media style in order to, to keep the educational quality or in fact make it even better because we have these other media types available that weren't initially there in its original print media format? And then finally are the current and emerging trends within multimedia. Okay, so things that are changing and it is, it is an ever-changing industry. Okay, there is so much happening in relation to multimedia and it's just constant updates in hardware, in software, okay, and it's keeping up to that. That often is a challenge and is an expensive challenge. So I hope this video has given you an introduction into the multimedia systems unit. Essentially how we use the different media types and combine them together, those types of text and numbers, audios, images, animations, and video to make these large multimedia projects for gaming, for um, entertainment, for movies, for education and training, for information provisions, okay? And just basically how are they enrich our society and, you know, really allow us to do a lot of things we couldn't do 20 years ago and uh, give users an experience that wasn't possible. It's a very demanding type of system in relation to hardware because it's large file sizes, involves a lot of compression, and when being an author, it creates a lot of resources to create. So I hope this video has given you an excellent introduction to this topic of multimedia systems.